everyone, and I'm Matt Paul. Welcome to Paul Offshore Fishing. Um, want to do a follow-up video to uh, my uh, bycatch reduction. I guess it's a little series. It turned in wasn't supposed to be a three-part series. Turned into a three-part video session. Um, was trying open broadcaster uh, suite for studio, and uh, the laptop. I was using on just didn't have the oomph to run the program and I was running into encoding issues after uh, doing some different things so one of the th if you had, hadn't had a chance go to the South, South Atlantic Fishing Management Council's uh, .net website and uh, go through and tr uh, search best practices for bycatch reduction um, for like your red snapper and your bottom fish and there's a good platform on there um, to go look at that. Uh, one of the uh, links in that um, guide so to speak was uh, developed by the Oregon Fish and Wildlife and uh, one of the things in that series that I did uh, based on that um, program that was distributed by the South Atlantic uh, Fishery Management Council and uh, they represent uh, like a, a mouth grab to, as a descending device um, and it was w one of the things in there was making a homemade descending device so that's what we're going to do uh, this evening. Um, now you might be asking well I thought you were supposed to vent fish well it's come out now that venting is very damaging to the fish and it affects the survivability um, and there are three ways you can have descending devices you can have what's called a mouth grab you can have what's called a fish elevator, which is a basically a milk crate, a weighted milk crate that you invert and basically uh, push the fish down. And then there's like a reversed hook um, is another or inverted hook uh, that is uh, produced to, uh, I don't know if it's produced or you had to make it to get the fish back down to a level where they recompress, so to speak, because what you have in this barotrauma where you um, pulling a fish up from so deep is used to having, you know, two or three hundred feet of water um, on it, and I don't want to get into. I could figure out how much pressure it is, but basically there's less pressure at the surface, and so then what you have is the stomach trying to come out the mouth, and you can't keep red snapper for one. So when you throw it back, it just floats on the water. So then sharks eat it, this, that, and the other. So you don't. Really, and they say that ten out or eight out of ten fish, um, you when you utilize a descending device, eight out of ten fish survive, and that's your grouper, your snapper, and all those. Um, and on that, as we talk, this is the Oregon Fish and uh, Wildlife um, pamphlet on how to make a rockfish de descending device out of a set of fish grips. So I saw that and I said, man, that'd be pretty neat. And it really an inexpensive way to do it. So we're going to go through this real quick. So what you need to do is go to Walmart and get you a set of $8 fish grips like so. Now this one already came with a hole here and, I, and to speed up time I went ahead and pre-drilled these. Well I went ahead and matched it right here. Well I got to thinking one of the ways this works is you'd grip you have the fish's mouth, and what you're supposed to do is grip the bottom jaw with these, and I'm not going to squeeze down, and then you use a rubber band, like so, and wrap and hold it down tight, put a weight on this end, and a reel or a downrigger on this end, and you drop the fish down, and you get down to, you know, around 100 feet, or depending, it's relative to your depth. If you're in 100 feet of water, you get around about 70 feet you know, the fish starts recompressing. If you're down, if you're in 300 feet of water, you need to get down to 200 feet, 250. So, and uh, anyways, getting back, you get this down, and then what you do is jerk, and the tension on the rubber, either the rubber band snaps, or it's enough give to release this. But I got to thinking, if I use these, I can't, and I got the fish grab here, I can't get the rubber band on. So what I went ahead and pre-drilled the hole down on the handle a little bit, so I can rig it up and still get the rubber band on these notches like so and uh, go from there. What also you're going to need are 
two pieces of twine or I used 100 pound mono and I just used about 15 inches and you need two of those and what we're going to do is on these holes on the handle we're going to just tie them in with uni knots now they in the right up this is where I'm going to kind of stray off they you talked about putting a loop knot in it and having a loop on it I'm going to go ahead and just put on a couple of 120 pound swivels and uh, so that way I can take the weight off or take it off or use the same fishing pole take take it on and off basically streamline and be able to take everything apart so with that being said we're going to go ahead and put our line in and, and I'm just going to do uni knots on both sides so I just got to get enough slack in here to loop everything around and I'm using my knee sorry you can't see but we're going to go ahead and start the loony the loony that's right I'm a loony uni knot and we're going to go ahead and start the loop and we're going to go ahead and put about four wraps in if I can do it um, with the hope everyone I'm kind of getting a little fast but I wanted to make sure I tell her hope everyone's doing well with the coronavirus and everything going on um, what my family's doing well uh, except last week I got a little injury on my index finger here from a uh, home project so to speak so it's making tying knots a little difficult now I only got three wraps in that and that feels actually pretty snug and I'm going to do the same thing on this side is another loony uh, case in the Mondays a uni knot and we're going to wrap pull that loop in there bring it back around and I'm sorry I can't hold this up a little higher but you know how it goes if you can kind of what you're used to working I'm used to sitting it down and doing it on my lap when we're out fishing or the boat's rocking so I got to get it down to where I'm used to wrapping these things at unfortunately it's not you normally with a uh, camera One of the things is to get this loop tight so it doesn't want to pull through. All right, and there's the one side. And we're going to go ahead and do this other side. And we're going to start this uni wrap. I got it right that time. And if I'm going a little fast, uh, or you got any questions feel free to leave a comment below and I'll go try to answer it as best I can and all of this information this is all this information is online I mean I'm just trying to give a visual representation and then obviously showing my modification to it which I'm sure there's a lot of smart people out there they would have come up with oh, we'll just put uh, snap swivels on it too um, and go from there one of the now they make actually mouth grips out there and there's some that are actually pressure activated and it's called sequelizer s-e-a-q-u-a-l-i-z-e-r i-z-r and uh, the hundred I think one goes max depth's 150 feet so it trips out at like it's, it's the range it trips out between 70 and uh, 100 feet and that's like $65 and then they got a bigger one, uh, one that trips out it's made for 300 foot of water that trips out like at between 200 and 250 and uh, I apologize again for not having this I'm going to have to redo it. Not being able to hold this swivel up where you guys can admire my, and I'm going to say it on purpose, loony knots. Obviously, I, I know we're talking about uni knots. But, uh, there we 
There you go. Make sure one of the things you got to do with these swivels in this 100 pound mono is the one of these loops got up here on near the barrel and it's worked its way lo loose. So, son of a gun. Of course, I cinched it down. All right, third time's a charm, or fourth. These knots are really gonna make me loony. Got it that time, boss man, boss ladies. All right, and then you can come back and cut, clip your tags. But uh, there we have it now. I got my rubber band on my wrist so I don't lose it. But per, one reason why we moved them down to here is so we can get the rubber band on. And uh, the particular ones I got, I needed to double wrap it. And I might need to triple wrap it, but actually that feels pretty good and you have to really you got to really snatch on it to get that thing to open up um, as far as weight I'm thinking you're gonna need three pounds of lead on it at least at least a pound but maybe three pounds of lead so with that if you got any questions there you have it that's the rockfish mouth homemade mouth grab uh, for a descending device um, if you hadn't had a chance to look at my other videos, uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Uh, I've got some more stuff coming out. So if you want to be able to see that, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notifications so you know uh, when the new content comes out. With that, this, I'm Matt Paul. Keep on fishing. Thank you.